Well, hello there viewers. I got a little bit of an image review for you here uh, with some new photos I've taken on my ongoing previously Taco Bell photo project. And um, don't worry, this isn't going to be just a selfish uh, show and tell wherein I flash my pictures at you and expect you to shower praise on me. Um, this is going to be a bit of a photography lesson because uh, I want to talk to you a bit about uh, the intricacies of fine-tuning a composition uh, as well as what kind of challenges I've faced in pursuing this ongoing photo project and how I've tried to me maintain creativity throughout and also uh, what it means to tell a story in your work. These pictures are coming from an ongoing photo project I'm working on that I'm calling Previously Taco Bell and that's a photo project where I'm uh, photographing uh, businesses that are occupying uh, former Taco Bell buildings and much like a hermit crab that has moved on from its shell these Taco Bells have long moved out and something else has moved in and I'm photographing them on a 6x17 film, 4x5 large format film as well as uh, Polaroids. Let's start with uh, a photo that uh, I took just a stone's throw away from my house here. This is a Mexican restaurant here in the city of Orange and um, I'm finding as I pursue this project that uh, many of these previously Taco Bells are still currently Mexican restaurants. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's the arches out front just go well with Mexican food. Maybe Taco Bell left behind a bunch of uh, taco shells when they moved out and it just made sense. I don't know, but um, a lot of Mexican restaurants. So this one here, I shot on a four x five Kodak Portra 400. Uh, first thing I wanna point out is I got a perfect sky. I really lucked out on this one. Just the right amount of clouds, just the right amount of uh, variation in blue tone. Um, but in this shot, I really wanna talk about um, the intricacies of fine-tuning a composition uh, by adjusting your placement relative to your subject. Composition is technically defined as the artistic arrangement of the parts of a picture. Now when it comes to painting, it's easy to understand how composition is changed. You just paint something in a different spot and you've changed your composition. With photography, it gets a little different. Um, now if it's like a portrait, or a still life where you can physically move your subject, then again, it's easy to control composition. But for a scene like this, or a landscape, um, anything where I cannot physically move anything in the scene to change composition, literally the only way I can change composition then is by me moving. And so what I've always told beginners in my uh, lessons and classes is composition is movement. So you have to move more. Well, in fact, one of the biggest mistakes I've seen with beginners is they show up to a location, this is beautiful, and they set up their tripod like right there. They didn't explore anywhere else. They didn't move around. They didn't look at how things change as they move. But movement, your movement, is oftentimes the only way you can change composition in your photography. So you really want to free up your feet. You want to move around a lot more. Um, so in this shot here, there were several things I was paying very close attention to as I moved around um, to keep the composition clean and not confusing. So here's what I mean by that. Um, when I frame up a composition like this, or really any photo, I have become hyper aware and hyper careful about things overlapping that are going to be confusing in the final photo. So for instance, if you have something dark in the foreground and something dark behind it that is almost the exact same color, if those things overlap, in the final photo, they're gonna blend into one confusing mass. Because standing out there with your two eyes where you have depth perception, sure, you can clearly tell those things are separate. But photos are two-dimensional, so those things are gonna flatten out into one mass. So you have to really watch how things overlap each other to make sure um, you're getting the point across in your composition. So like this one here, if we look at the side entrance on this building, you can see there is a just a sliver of the white brick to the left of the door, between the door and that column that supports the overhang. That was very intentional. I moved around and looked very carefully at those two elements, the door and the column, and I made sure that I got enough separation between them that they didn't uh, collapse on top of each other. Because they're essentially the same color, they would become one kind of confusing mass. Now the reason I didn't go further, the reason I didn't 
uh, put more separation between those two things is because like everything in your photo, it's a give and take. If I moved further, then something over here might start to overlap that I didn't want to overlap. So I'm trying to find a happy medium where I'm getting separation between the door and the column, but also these other two things aren't overlapping too much uh, to be distracting. So very careful placement just by moving my feet back and forth. Um, side note on this, I normally take these pictures wearing my orange safety vest so that people leave me alone because um, it really does work. People leave me the F alone when I'm wearing that, that uh, orange vest. I didn't wear it on this one um, because I was way across the street. It was nighttime. I figured eh, no one's going to care, whatever. Um, but man, I should have worn it because the manager, ooh, she was mad dogging me. She was looking through the window and then she came out and she was like standing on the sidewalk, got on the phone. She was definitely calling the cops. Um, luckily, I was wrapping up my last, sh my last uh, exposure right around that time. So I just... Uh, packed up and pieced out, but um, the orange vest, it works, man, because this one uh, nearly uh, cost me the shoot by not wearing it. So let's move on to the next photo. I shot this on a Kodak Portra 400, 6x17. Uh, this thing has some big time Los Pollos Hermanos vibes, if uh, you're a uh, Breaking Bad fan. Um, I actually have a lot of thoughts on this photo in terms of the technical challenges of metering it, as well as uh, the technical challenges of taking a picture like this at dusk or dawn. Um, but I'm actually going to do a separate video just on that, talking all about taking pictures at dusk or dawn. Um, so keep an eye out for that coming soon. But uh, let's talk about the compositional aspects of this. And specifically, I want to talk about what it means to tell a story in your work. Um, you know, when I started out in photography, I would hear that all the time. Oh, you want to tell a story with your photo. And uh, I had such a simple mind. I still do, that um, I was always picturing like, okay, tell a story in my work. Uh, there once was a boy named Jack, and Jack found a magic bean. Like to me, that was a story, so I didn't understand how the hell am I telling a story with my landscape photography. Um, but it's taken me many years to realize that telling a story in your photography is not that kind of story. It's not a beginning, middle, and end uh, kind of deal. It's Simply that the viewer knows nothing about your subject other than what you're showing them. And so you want to make sure that what you're showing them is telling the whole story about your subject. That's all. Um, so what you choose to include and exclude is the story. So like on this photo here, what story is it telling? Well. You know, there's a lot of things we take for granted when we look at a photo. Things we're understanding about our subject without even realizing it. Like on this one, right off the bat, you know this was taken in the United States. You can tell it from the uh, signage, all being in English. Um, also, this strip mall off to the left is a very American style strip mall. It's got a smoke shop, a tattoo parlor, a bunch of trash in the parking lot. I ain't judging, I'm no snob, but it does tell us this ain't exactly Beverly Hills. Um, and the cars even tell you that this was taken in the United States. It's all telling a story about where this is. Um, and, you know, us here in the, in the U.S. of A., we take that for granted. We kind of assume all pictures are taken in the United States. Um, but also, uh, it's easy for us to tell this was taken in the, United, in the United States because we're used to it. But I have people email me all the time uh, from... Europe especially, telling me how they love that my photography captures that American feel. And I don't even know I'm capturing that. I'm just taking pictures around here. But something in my photos is telling them very clearly that these are, this is an American photographer, this is an American uh, slice of life. It's all very American to them. And what's included in this photo is all telling that part of the story. Also, the timing is obviously telling the story of the time of day. Um, and there's another aspect of a story here that I kind of lucked out on, but um, I really like when my pictures uh, at dusk or dawn like this have a little bit of a human element, um, not too much, but specifically like a, a one person having a quiet moment uh, to themselves in the building. So I had it on my Houston's Liquor photo with the um, uh, cashier in there, uh, 405 Donut uh, had it with the cashier sitting there. 
This one has it as well. So there's a, it's difficult to see, especially because she's very small in the photo, but there's a woman inside the, the restaurant there looking at her phone um, by herself. You can't see anyone else in the, in the restaurant. And that's exactly the kind of element I like to, uh, to get in there. But there's another aspect to the storytelling part of this photo that pertains to her. So you can see the car on the outside there um, with the brake lights on, which I originally hated, but I actually kind of like the brake lights against the, the wall now for reasons I'll explain now. Um, there's a guy sitting in there. He's backed up. He's waiting for his wife to go pick up food. Um, that's the story. So little elements like that can tell a story that's a little more beginning, middle, and end. Here's a character. That's what this character is doing. And that's what this character is doing. That's kind of a more literal story. But the broader um, composition of this overall scene is telling a story just by what's included and what isn't. So let's move on to some photos that uh, I have yet to post on my uh, Instagram or website. And I'm going to start with this one here that um, I'm just going to let it kind of uh, wash over you because there's kind of a funny aspect to this photo, which is it's a miniature Taco Bell. Uh, this is in San Diego. I found out about this one online. Um, this is actually at a current Taco Bell. For some reason, there is a miniature Taco Bell right off the drive-thru. Um, this was an incredibly awkward photo to take because I was right next to the drive-thru with my big 6x17 camera. Um, and I was there for kind of a while because I was trying to get just the right placement of the car coming in on the right. Because again, telling a story. I need to tell the story that this is a miniature Taco Bell. But I also want it to be a little confusing at first. Like I want people to see it and be like, wait, is that a Taco Bell? Oh, it's a mini Taco Bell. Like I want there to be that little moment of discovery when people look at this. So there's a few things I did to contribute to that story of it being a mini Taco Bell. One is I used a shallow depth of field, so I left my aperture pretty wide open so the background and foreground would blur out. People naturally associate shallow depths of field with small subjects, subconsciously I'm sure, because you only ever see it on pictures of relatively small subjects. You never see a picture of a huge building with a shallow depth of field or a huge mountain with a shallow depth of field. You only see it on pictures of food and insects and uh, flowers and people. Smaller subjects, we know that only smaller subjects really create that shallow depth of field. So that's why I wanted uh, a shallow depth of field here. I also really wanted a car off to the right coming into the composition, slightly out of focus. Because by having a car in the foreground and then this smaller building behind it, you get a sense of scale. So again, telling a story. Um, including that car is telling the story of how big this uh, mini Taco Bell is. And then the woman in the back going to her car as well also does that. So these are all things uh, that contribute to the story of this mini Taco Bell. And it also contributes to the story of what the hell is this thing doing here? Because like it's obviously next to a, uh, a road or a drive through or something. Why is there a mini Taco Bell out there? Um, this lighting is not my favorite uh, kind of midday um, harsh lighting. I used a polarizer to help cut the uh, uh, glare off of the ground when the light is coming in from that direction you oftentimes get a little bit of a glare off the ground and a polarizer can cut through that so that helped um, bring back some of the color in the washed out areas but difficult because the uh, lighting was not excellent I also shot a few Polaroids of this thing uh, both of them not great uh, I was having some issues with the film just um, not developing evenly and stuff so I I don't know what that was about. I think it might have been an expired pack of film. So uh, whatever, got a few Polaroids. Those would be nice little additions to sprinkle in in the book one day. Now moving on to the next composition. This was also in uh, San Diego. I actually spent a whole day down in San Diego just photographing previously Taco Bells. It was a wonderful little Sunday. Um, photographed a few of them down there. Uh, but this shot, uh, everything was coming together perfectly. I loved the light. I loved the sky. Um, and I showed up and it, it was closed. I didn't know this place was closed on Sunday and that was just perfect. I was so happy because I love having uh, the building all to myself so that I can just kind of relax and really frame it the way I want without uh, worrying about people, um, you know, calling the fuzz on me. Um, so this shot here, I used a 4x5 Kodak Portrait 160. I did very uh, hard shift on the lens 
because you'll see here there's this palm tree and that is very nicely placed between the edge of the drive through window and the edge of that wall and um, the palm tree fronds are not overlapping where it says drive through and in fact the palm tree fronds are kind of uh, framing a little arc over that 24 7 drive through sign um, that was very intentional so uh, i was only able to get that palm tree just where i wanted it by moving left and right so again careful placement with left and right so i moved back and forth until that palm tree got exactly where i wanted it um, in between the drive through sign and the edge of the wall and then uh, i pointed my camera directly at the building uh, my 4x5 camera and that put the composition way off to where, from what I wanted it to be. I'm actually standing more in front of that rolled tacos sign. That's kind of the center of my camera. Um, and so I was getting way too much of the right side of the building. I wanted more of the left. So I used a really hard uh, lens shift um, to get the composition where I wanted it. And um, that allowed me to keep all the lines horizontal uh, left to right. So. One of the beauties of a view camera is uh, I'm able to uh, just shift to change my composition rather than pointing it in a different direction. I also shot a few uh, Polaroids of this. I uh, had a nice little um, dilapidated drive through sign. Uh, and then, I don't know why, but these exterior bathrooms um, just harken back to my youth, I guess. Um, a lot more buildings had that when I was younger, so like old Del Tacos and stuff. You always had to go outside to use the bathroom. So kind of liked that, um, that I had that there. Um, I eventually moved on to another location. I didn't feel it was worth uh, exposing any 4x5 or 6x17. The scene didn't really call to me, but I fired off a couple of um, uh, Polaroids. This was from that same pack of film that must have been expired because you can see the uh, development is all uneven. These pictures are not really usable. Kind of a shame, but um, yeah, I didn't feel like that building I, I really wanted to shoot, you know, with uh, any serious equipment. So. Um, but we move on to another one here. Uh, this one was a little tricky for me because I, I know it doesn't have the impact that like my dusk photos have. In fact, all of these daytime shots, sometimes they, they just don't have that, that oomph that the, the dusk photos get. But in pursuing this ongoing project, um, you know, I'm, I'm having difficulty uh, maintaining creativity throughout because I'm shooting the same subject over and over and over and over again. It's the same architectural style. Um, so I can't just do all dusk straight ons. Um, I have to mix it up. And so the way I'm mixing it up, the way I'm maintaining creativity is shooting in different light than I normally shoot in, shooting in different formats, uh, making sure it's not all six by 17 or all four by five and mainly really forcing myself to explore different angles. You know, not just the front of the building, um, not just straight ons, not just dusk. I'm really trying to uh, get the creativity elsewhere since the subject is so similar throughout this project. And I think that's a probably a common problem with um, pursuing a project like this where it's kind of the same subject over and over and over again. The only way you can still be creative is by switching up things in the other aspects of your photography. I do like this shot probably mainly because it's uh, different than um, all the other compositions, but um, I do agree it's probably not one of the most uh, impactful uh, images from this series. Uh, but you know, again, I'm, I'm thinking of the whole body of work. I'm not thinking of each individual photo. Um, I want the whole body of work to have some variety within it. So um, this will uh, be part of that. Uh, and then the last one I shot in San Diego uh, was this one here. So it went for my, my good old uh, reliable dusk timing. Um, this is a perfect example of something that drives me nuts that I hear as critiques from people sometimes. People will see these photos and be like, oh, too much dead space on the left. Um, I get that all the time in my photos, especially the panoramics. And it's like they want the photo to just look like this. like. It should only be the building because basically what's happening is people are assuming this building is the subject and therefore it should fill the frame. One of those like kind of 101 composition tips you get out of a, a you know, cheesy book from Barnes and Noble that tells you use the rule of thirds. Make sure your subject fills the frame. And don't get me wrong, I've taught those things. It's good for beginners. But 
you don't necessarily want your very obvious subject to fill the frame. What people who make that critique on me don't realize is I'm not photographing a building here. I'm photographing a scene, which the building is part of. So off to the left here, it's going off into the horizon. It uh, contributes to the sense of this building being alone in this environment. There's really nothing else as brightly lit as this building uh, down that alleyway. The palm trees are telling you we're near the coast. I mean, you can pretty much feel the uh, coastal breeze coming off this thing. It has a San Diego vibe to it because of what I've included on the left. But mainly I like scenes where the building is kind of uh, a beacon of light in this dimmer surrounding. And so, you know, when you're framing up your compositions, sure it's good to have your subject fill the frame, but don't take that too literally. Your subject might be the whole scene. And so you might need that other stuff in the photo. And don't just crop everything in super tight um, because you're assuming that, well, that's my subject, that should fill the frame. Now the very last photo I want to show you is uh, another local one. I absolutely loved the red color of this building. Um, and I had visited this location probably half a dozen times trying to get the timing just right and getting the light just right. And uh, I got really lucky on this day for two reasons. I actually had a client photo shoot um, about an hour's drive away this day. And I woke up that, that morning and I was like, the sky's perfect today. I finally have a perfect sky to go photograph that red building. And of course, I gotta go on a client shoot. But um, I showed up to the client shoot and they had no idea I was coming that day. Um, my client didn't tell the property owner that I was coming, so uh, I had to leave. So luckily, my client screwing up actually worked to my benefit. I was able to come back home, grab my 6x17 camera and head out and photograph this building when the light was just perfect. So as I've talked about in previous videos, I really love um, that kind of natural light that's pretty rare where you have thin cloud cover scattered throughout the sky. It's, it's high altitude clouds specifically. It's not the low cumulus clouds, it's high altitude cirrus clouds. And if those cirrus clouds move in front of the sun, they'll illuminate like kind of a giant softbox in the sky. And it makes this beautiful soft light on the landscape. The shadows get real soft. And um, it's, that light is so rare, and it's, in my opinion, some of the most beautiful light you can come across. And I got it on this one. So you can see how soft the shadows are. I got that beautiful sky behind it. I love that type of sky where it's not a deep blue. I generally don't like super deep blue midday skies in my photos these days. Um, so I got all these white clouds to kind of break it up. Eventually those uh, clouds started to thin a little bit to where I do have hard shadows now, but the shadows are a little bit lighter than they normally are. And that's because the sun was still passing through some cloud cover. It was thinner now, and that's why the light isn't as soft. And um, I made sure I got my timing to where there was no people, no cars in the scene. Um, I love the bike in the foreground. It kind of shows that there's probably just one guy in there working. And um, yeah, I just, I love the color palette on this particularly. And I, I like the straight lines. And I also use some uh, shift on this one as well, because I'm actually centered uh, more in front of that electrical box, but I had to shift a little bit to, to get the framing I wanted. So um, yeah, lots of, uh, lots of deep thoughts about composition, I know. But um, that's some new uh, previously Taco Bell images. Again, if you know of any in your area, please email me. Um, and uh, that way I can add it to my list of previously Taco Bells that I wanna eventually photograph one day. Who knows how long this project will take? Maybe it'll be a decade before I'm done. But one day, I'll have me a book. Um, but there you have it. Uh, image review with some uh, compositional tips thrown in. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.